Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us kneel and humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy law. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind. Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of his holy name. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. The Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. Oh, come let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. First lesson is taken from the books of Acts, second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both the Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you've crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, every one whom the Lord our God calls to him testified with many other arguments and exhorted them saying save yourselves from these corrupt generations so those who welcomed his message were baptized and that day about 3,000 persons were added the word of the Lord thanks be to God the second lesson is taken from 1st Peter chapter 1 if you invoke as the Father, the one who judges all people impartially, according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. We you know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood of Christ, like that of the Lamb, without defect or blemish was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope 
are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those following along in your books of common prayer, we're on page 52, the Te Deum. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou didst tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born a virgin. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We we'll believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went to them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. One of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of who, those who were there with us went to the tomb and found it as the women had said, but they did not see it. Then he said to them, How foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe that the prophets have declared it was not necessary that Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory. Not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broken, and gave it to them. When their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, Our Lord has risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. And they told what happened on the road and how he'd been known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Whenever I hear this passage, I am often struck um, with what a beautiful scene it is in so many ways. Every one of us has experienced a funeral. We've all buried people we love and we care about. And it seems to hang over us like a cloud, almost like a cartoon cloud. Everywhere we go, there's that impending sense of sorrow and loss, just the same way those two disciples were feeling when they were walking down the road, sort of kicking rocks and shuffling their feet, probably looking down dejected and hurt because the one whom they trusted, the one whom they loved, their rabbi, their friend, had been taken from them. And not just taken, but executed in the most shameful and humiliating way that Hebrew could possibly experience. So the beginning point of this journey for them is decay, is entropy, is death. And in Luke's gospel, the two friends are just so dejected that they're actually walking a path of death. That is, of course, until Jesus comes and walks alongside them. Now, this is where it can sort of diverge into two viewpoints of what happened. The first viewpoint, or path A, is that yes, Jesus had to be brutalized and murdered to sort of assuage God's bloodthirsty revenge that he needed to have all these people pay for their sin. And Jesus stepped in and did that for us. And that when those folks break bread with Jesus, that's why they're made aware of him because the Holy Communion makes us aware of his presence and experience that leads us towards resurrection. That is a perfectly acceptable and very common and orthodox approach to this text. But I want to read you something from an American theologian and minister named Peter Lightheart, who said, For Jesus, the feast was not just a metaphor for the kingdom. As Jesus announced the feast of the kingdom, he also brought it into reality through his own feasting. Unlike many theologians, he did not come preaching an ideology or promoting ideas or even teaching moral maxims. Came teaching the feast of the kingdom, and he came feasting in the kingdom. Jesus did not merely go around talking about eating and drinking, he went around eating and drinking. And I say, darn it, that is really good and important. I agree with Peter here. Yes, there are symbols in the teaching and ministry of Jesus. And those symbols do point to something else. Absolutely they do. But more importantly, those signs and symbols aren't empty. They're not naked on their own. They have their own value, especially here and now. The trajectory of the disciples' journey, much like our own, is perfectly encapsulated on the road to Emmaus. It begins in death. That's the beginning of the human condition, that we all will die one day. It's a fact. We cannot escape our mortality. We can either try to ignore it and be unpleasantly surprised at the end, or we can become obsessed with it until our lives are one long death march. We can even try to slow down the process of age and decay through plastic surgery or buying Corvettes at the age of 70. None of that changes the fact that the Grim Reaper is still coming for all of us at some point. What Jesus recommends to us, take it or leave it, is that life happens in the now. It's happening now. When the two disciples reach their destination and they encourage Jesus to join them, they're reliving the here and now that they experience with him in his teaching. And that is when Jesus reveals himself to them in the feast. Something like, lift your chin up. Don't stare at the dust and the mud. 
Listen to what I have told you and feast together. Join in the celebration of food and laughs, of love and hope, of what is instead of what isn't. Truth is that life can be really tough sometimes. It can throw us curveballs. But the only way it's made bearable is in the community and the support of others. And even that can't be authentic without us making ourselves vulnerable and known to one another. Yes, we're going to get beaten and brokenhearted sometimes, knocked around a bit. We may even suffer as Christ suffered. That is precisely what Jesus showed us on the cross. The willingness to take all of that for just telling the truth and being honest. And in the end, what really mattered to him the most? But his disciples. He reached out to the two of them on the road, rejoined them, said, I am still with you, will always be with you, and we have each other. Have a beer, have some food, forget the problems of the world. Their journey began mired in death, but Jesus brought them to truth in his presence, and he continued their teaching and revealed himself in the communion of the common meal. In fact, what healing really happens. To God be the glory. Let us say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. Saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us kneel in peace and pray to the Lord. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continuing in the Book of Common Prayer on page 55, reading the suffrages B. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name forever, worlds without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, and our trust is in thee. Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son hath made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith. We may behold him in all his redeeming work who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Colic for Mission on the Book of Common Prayer, page 58. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee 
to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. With thy, with spirit. thy spirit. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we this. In the general thanksgiving, we kneel and say, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, Give us that due sense of all thy mercies. Have our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Continuing on page 59, the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, Thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in the world knowledge of thy truth, the world to come, life everlasting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, my hope for you this week is that if you are traveling on that road to Emmaus with your heads down, remember this, you are loved, you are forgiven, you are part of the Holy Communion of the Trinity, and nothing you ever do or say will ever shift that.